The baby is taken home from the hospital where it was born. In this film we're going to see what happens when a woman is pregnant and watch that wonderful process, the development and birth of a new human life. First, let's look at a woman's reproductive organs, her ovaries, oviducts and uterus or womb. The uterus is that bulge in the centre and the two oviducts branch off it at each side to curl around the two ovaries. Let's look inside the uterus and one of the oviducts. Once a month an egg, an ovum, is released in one or other of the ovaries. At the same time, the lining of the uterus thickens, ready to receive a developing cluster of new cells if the egg gets fertilised. The egg passes into the oviduct, the tube leading to the uterus, and passes down it. If the woman has not had sexual intercourse, or if she has, has used a contraceptive, the egg cannot be fertilised by male sperm. There is then no need for the specially prepared lining to the womb and this will be cast off and with the egg will pass out of her body at her monthly period. The male reproductive organs. Spermatozoa, sperm, are produced in the testes. They pass up into the body, collecting various substances to form a liquid called semen in which the sperm swim about. When the man is sexually aroused, there's an increased blood flow into his penis which becomes erect and stiffer. At the climax of sexual intercourse, semen is propelled into the penis and ejaculated. Here you can see the tiny spermatozoa swimming in the semen. Twenty of them lined up head to tail would only measure one millimetre. Each of a man's sperms carries the instructions which can give his characteristics to a baby, just as each ovum carries a woman's hereditary code. At the climax of lovemaking, the semen spurts into the top of the vagina, and some of it passes through into the uterus. This means that if there's an egg on its way down from an ovary, sperm can reach it. Some sperm do not penetrate, but one may. The result will be a fertilised egg, containing genetic information from both the mother and the father. From this, a baby will develop. The egg divides again and again, producing a clump of living cells. This becomes attached to the thickened wall of the uterus, and the baby starts to develop. Sometimes two eggs may be released from the ovary. If each of them is fertilised by a sperm, twins will result. They're called fraternal twins, and while they'll be fairly like each other, there are differences because each came from a different ovum and sperm. They may be two boys, or two girls, or boy and girl, like the twins in this family. Sometimes a single fertilised egg from one ovum and one sperm starts to multiply normally, then splits into two clumps of cells, each of which develops into a baby. We then get identical twins, always both of the same sex and very similar. What determines whether a boy or girl baby is produced? Well, every living cell in our bodies contains many pairs of what are called chromosomes. One pair is called the sex chromosomes. In a woman, the two sex chromosomes, called X chromosomes, are both alike. A woman's ova, eggs, are formed by certain of her cells dividing in two, so that each carries one of the X chromosomes. In a man, the pair of sex chromosomes contains an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. When his sperm are formed by the splitting of certain cells, half will contain X chromosomes and half Y chromosomes. 
So, if the woman's ovum is fertilized by one of the sperms carrying the X chromosome, the resulting fertilized cell will contain a pair of X chromosomes and will develop into a girl. But if a sperm containing a Y chromosome fertilizes the egg, the fertilized cell will contain an X and a Y sex chromosome and will develop into a boy. If you think about it, this means that there should be as many boys born as girls, which is nearly true. There are other factors to consider. Here's a model of the ovaries, oviduct and uterus, carrying a tiny developing baby, a fetus, about one month old. The uterus will stretch to accommodate the baby as it grows, as we'll see. Here we are at eight weeks. The uterus is larger. The fetus has grown a little. During pregnancy, one of the tests carried out in the antenatal clinic is called ultrasound scanning, and it enables the medical staff to find out exactly how old the fetus is by measuring it and to make sure it's developing properly. This probe, pressed gently against the specially moistened skin, measures the echo from high-frequency sound waves transmitted into the uterus, and a computer uses the figures to plot a picture of the fetus in the womb. This is the picture you get of a 10-week-old fetus kicking its limbs inside the uterus. There's its heart beating. A very lively unborn baby, active in its mother's womb. Here we are at about five months. The fetus is much bigger and looks more like a human baby, and the uterus has stretched considerably. It's very important that mothers attend antenatal clinics during pregnancy to make sure their babies are growing normally and to take action if there are any possible problems. Blood pressure has to be taken. We all have a blood pressure, but if it becomes lower or higher than normal, then there may be certain steps that have to be taken to make sure that mother and baby come to no harm. Blood samples are taken and analysed because this can provide a clue to problems which may need to be dealt with. It's important to keep an eye on the mother's gain in weight and she must eat the right foods when she's pregnant. The unborn baby's heartbeat can be measured and heard using this equipment. Using the ultrasound scan, we can see quite clearly the healthy heartbeats of a five-month-old baby inside its mother's uterus. Seven months, and the fetus's very well-developed, greatly expanded uterus. It feeds and gets its oxygen through the placenta, an important organ which grows as the baby develops. It's connected to the placenta by the umbilical cord. What does the placenta do? Well, it's a complicated organ, but we can think of it as a sort of filter. The mother's own blood supply runs on the left of the dotted line, and the quite separate blood circulation of the fetus, the unborn baby, on the right. Food materials and oxygen carried in the mother's blood can pass through the placenta to the baby's blood. They pass up the umbilical cord to the developing and growing fetus. The waste products produced in the chemical processes going on in the baby's body come back down the cord and pass through the placenta to the mother's bloodstream to be carried to her kidneys and excreted. There are dangerous things which, if they get into the mother's blood, can pass through the placenta and harm the baby. 
If she smokes during pregnancy, certain substances which get into her blood can reach the fetus and the baby may be born dangerously underweight, needing special care at the hospital. A pregnant woman must look after her health properly. At about nine months, the baby's ready to be born. There's the placenta and the baby's head is down here. The baby will be delivered through the vagina, which can stretch to let it through. It's actually inside a sac containing fluid. Here, only one part of this sac has been left on. It actually covers the whole baby. When the baby is about to be born, powerful contractions of the muscles of the uterus push it down through the neck of the womb so that its head passes into the stretched vagina. When it's delivered, the baby now breathes air through its mouth and lungs and no longer needs the umbilical cord which connects with the placenta, so the cord's severed. The placenta becomes detached from the uterus and is expelled as the afterbirth. It too passes out through the vagina. Here's a delivered placenta, and you can see the bag, the sack of fluid in which the baby lay inside the uterus. This breaks before the baby is delivered. Here's the umbilical cord. It's rubbery and very flexible. Inside, there are two arteries to carry deoxygenated blood and waste products from the baby to the placenta, and a single vein which carries oxygen and food materials to the baby. The cord is designed so that it can't easily kink and so stop the flow of blood between placenta and baby during the months that the baby is developing and growing in its mother's body. Some parents like to have their babies at home, but most are born in hospital where there are skilled staff to make sure all goes well and to deal with any problems which may arise. That's the father, and their baby is soon going to be born. She has been in labour with regular contractions of her uterus for a little time. Here comes the baby's head, and for the first time it can breathe air instead of needing oxygen from its mother's bloodstream. Sometimes the cord is cut at this stage. This doesn't hurt because there are no nerves in it. The mother rests for a moment. It's very hard work for her. Now another set of contractions and their baby will be born. While the placenta, the afterbirth, is delivered, a quite easy process, he's weighed. A fine baby boy. He'll need all the love and care his parents can give him so that he can grow into a happy, healthy human being. Bringing into the world a new life is a very great responsibility and a very great joy. Thank you.